Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. We've got a cool new tool out there, completely free, and if you're like me, it's probably filling up your Twitter feed right now. This is from the maker of uh, Magicka Voxel, everyone's favorite voxel application, and this is called... All right, this is one of the challenges of this job. People make up words, and now I have to figure out how to say them. They've combined the words Arial and LOD together. So we can either call it Arial Odd or Area Lod or Arial LOD. I'll go with Arial LOD, even though it's missing an L in that case. Now, this is, again, as I mentioned, from the guy who made Magic of Voxel. And here it is, and you'll notice it's a whole lot like Magic of Voxel. To grab it, you head on over to their website. Don't worry, I will toss this link down below. But you'll see there is the tab there for Magic of Voxel. But the one you want is Arial LOD uh, available right here. This is an interactive path tracing renderer for height maps. That's a pretty wordy way of saying it renders voxel data um, height maps. Um, if you don't know what a height map is, it is a grayscale image used to uh, store height information, often used for the maps in games. And I'll be completely honest, I don't see a real world use for this tool. Uh, but it's fun to play around with and it's completely free. So I figured I would showcase it. It is unfortunately only for Windows uh, 32 and 64 bit right now. And as you can see by the version of 0.0.0, .0 this, is, um, this is an early release. Um, additionally, uh, in addition to PNG uh, image height maps, you can also bring in ASC format and you can bring in DTM format. You get examples from NASA and um, the UK government actually right here. So if you want to you know, drill into some data from UK GIS information, it is available. As you see, there's a straightforward and simple map here. We can click over here and switch out the height map. Um, this was in, let's see, my downloads folder, wherever you downloaded it to and extract it out to. Uh, in this case, this guy right here, you'll notice there is a folder called Maps, and it's got a couple to get you started. The Probably the most interesting one is Manchester. So here you see it is a height map made from aerial scanning of the Manchester area. And you can navigate around it, zoom in with the middle mouse button, uh, zoom out with the middle mouse button. You can orbit with the right mouse button, and you can also use the WASD keys to do the same things and the uh, Q and E for twisting up and down. Now you'll notice each time I move it, it is starting the render over again. You've got a lot of control over how the render actually happens. So over here you can see uh, scaling settings. We'll get back to these things in a second. Well, you've got an LOD setting, part of the name, the aerial LOD. We can change out the LOD. So let's switch here to a three LOD and you're gonna see things get awfully blocky. Four, like so. And then we go back to one and we get back to our full resolution version. And yeah, it's height maps being rendered. Uh, on top of that, we've got control over how the camera works. We can check the aperture of it. Uh, we can change the lens type between perspective, uh, stereographic projection, and equirectular, whatever, panorama projective. Uh, we can change our field of view values. So here we'll jump it up by 10. Now, unfortunately, each one is going to trigger a re-render as a result, everything that we change. We can change the exposure levels like so. Uh, we can set a vignette effect if we so wish, and we can apply a bloom in it as well. And then over here, we've got, oops, did not mean to close that down. Uh, we've got some options so we can actually render this out. We can apply a denoising filter. So if you want, at the end, you like your results, you can click this and it will render it out to a PNG file that you can then share. Or if you're like, again, anybody on my Twitter feed, you can send it up on Twitter and show the results you've got. Down here, you've got control over your camera. So here is a perspective rendering. Here is a free camera, here is an orthographic projection, and here is an isometric projection. I personally generally prefer um, perspective. Uh, down here, we've got uh, the ability to recenter the camera on the scene, and we've got some controls here. We've got ruler controls you can use, and we've got box controls you can use for orbiting around in the scene. So it's really easy to work with. Now, at the same time, you'll see you've got this horizon and background and all that kind of stuff. You've got full control of that over here. You've got control over the lighting, so we can have the sun and the amount of influence of the sun. Uh, we can have the sky and the way the sky works even cooler. We can actually come in here and set an HDR uh, for the, the environment. So it's here, we'll do this parking lot one. You'll see this one, and then that will apply on the uh, rendered results. Uh, we can set up fog. We can, again, turn down the in, turn up and down the intensity of the sun. We can change the angle of the sun right here. Um, here we can set the amount of bouncing that happens in the render. This is really going to slow things down, so I'm not going to do it. You can also change the sampling uh, ways that are used. You can turn anti-aliasing off and on and so on. And you can do things like turn the background. You can set up a background color. So, for example, if I wanted to have this orangey background, I can do so. 
And then once that is still turn the background on, set my color, pick the orange there. And there you see we're going to now have this orangish background in our render. We're also going to have a very blur. I don't know why that blur kicked in, but it did. So I think I did something I shouldn't have. So we'll just turn that back off. And here you can see the end uh, result of those manipulations. You've also got, again, control over your lighting. You saw we can do the HDRI maps. Um, this, you can set up higher bounce rates. You'll get a better uh, render result from your work. And kind of essentially, that's it. We can change the rendering resolution right here. So you'll notice we're not using our full width available on this monitor. So I could set this up to instead be, say, 1400 by 800. And there you see we're getting more of the screen being used. Um, your render result samples per pixel can be set right here. So if we want to double that up, we can. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Once you've got a result that you really like, go ahead and click render and you can save it out as a rendered PNG file and you basically get your rendered result. Now, one thing that is kind of key here, you'll notice if you click the height map right here, um, that's how we loaded in the various different options. You can also bring in, once again, ASC files, those image files, and you can also bring DTM files in from NASA. But you can also go ahead, so I downloaded this particular version, but any, you just basically will go to Google Image Search and search for height map. And it's just a grayscale piece of information with the height encoded based off of the grayscale values. Um, so we could grab any one of these. I grabbed one already, and we'll just go ahead and import it. So come up here, go to my desktop, we'll grab it right here. And there is the result of our height map. So you can bring in any grayscale image that you want to go ahead and render, and you can see the results here. Now, what you may notice with this particular version, yeah, let me just dial that back. What you might notice with this particular version is it's a little extreme, and that's where some of these values come in. So we can change the scaling, and we'll set this to instead like 0 0.3 instead of 1.0. And there we'll see the results of your height map are a lot less pronounced. Let's get this to a different map there and there you see the height map and this is obviously used in game dev quite commonly this is how you uh, encode terrain information especially if your terrain doesn't have overlapping layers like cave systems and so on uh, in which case you have to use like a hybrid approach of say a voxel cave and then a height map on top but that is what Aerial LOD is all about it is for rendering height maps uh, once again it is uh, completely free uh, once you're done, you can go ahead, you can save your map right here. You can save it out as a PNG file. Or once again, you can, when you are done and happy, you can go ahead and do a render. Uh, sure, we'll go ahead and show that. And this isn't the fastest thing in the universe, but you'll see, there it goes. Render, 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 render. And we'll give it a second. So this is rendering at 1024 by 1024. Bum, 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 bum. And done. Should be here. There we go. So there is our rendered height map. Kind of cool. And that is essentially it. So once again, I will toss this link in the comment down below. This is the same guy who made Magic of Voxel. Same technology, obviously, being used in Magic of Voxel. But in this case, it is being used to render height maps uh, with full environmental lighting and uh, camera effects and so on. It's definitely a neat project. Now, as I mentioned right off the hop, I'm not sure there's any actual uses for this project. Uh, but that doesn't stop me from sharing it because, once again, this is very neat. So hopefully at least a few of you found that interesting. It is a Sunday. You need something to play around with. Go out there, grab some height maps, throw them into Aerial LOD, and let me know what you think. Also, let me know what you think of the pronunciation. How would you call this? Would you call it Aerial LOD like I have been? Area LOD? Or uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to try anymore. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.